On this episode of Canine Corner, it's all about dogs giving. We'll be talking about Thanksgiving safety for pups. Plus, we'll learn about the Canine Companions for Independence organization. And we'll introduce you to this adorable girl who's looking for a forever home. All this coming up right now on Canine Corner. I'm Rhiannon Tertanich, your host for Canine Corner, the show that your dog will give two paws up. We have a great show for you today. Thanksgiving, or Dogsgiving, is right around the corner. So Gene Brusovich from Tranquil Pet will be here sharing some Thanksgiving safety tips for pets. And we'll sit down with the national organization, Canine Companions for Independence, and learn about the amazing work they're doing. But first, let's meet adorable rescue dogs who are looking for their forever homes. So Pug Nation's been around for about eight years now. We're very, very lucky. We have a facility that's 24 hours, seven days a week. So we have um, staff all day long, all year round, um, which is great because people can come and visit us and see the dogs and interact with them. And we're located in Gardena, California, which is about 20 minutes south of LAX Airport. We're open Tuesday through Sunday, 12 to 4, so visitors can come in and, and hang out with the dogs for a little bit if they want to. You can also like fill out applications there if you want to do adoption or foster or things of that nature. We also have the HIPPO program um, is for people who either can't have a dog right now um, for whatever reason, if their home doesn't allow it or if they have a dog in a home that doesn't like other dogs. They can come in um, and spend an hour, one day a week, um, with an assigned pug. They can spend more time if they want to, but um, they'll come in and spend time with that pug and just hang out with them and love on them. And some of our hippos take their kiddos to the beach or for puppuccinos at Starbucks. And um, they keep journals. And once that dog gets adopted, the journal goes home with them. Um, so their family has kind of more tidbits about their personality and things that they like or don't like. Um, so it's a really great program. So there's a lot going on at our facility. We do events, um, adoption events, a couple times a month, and we have a couple of big events a couple times a year, so um, definitely check out our website, pugnationla.org. All the information you could ever want about what we do is there. So this is Lexi. Lexi's 12. Um, Lexi was relinquished to us by her owner, um, and she was actually relinquished in some pretty bad shape. Her eyes were really red and dry. She had some skin infections, nose infection. Um, we got her on some good medication, started giving her medicated baths. And I don't know if you can really see, but her eyes are pretty clear. They still get kind of green and goopy because she's got dry eye, which is typical for pug. Also, her eyelashes kind of scrape against the eyeballs, and so that causes some irritation too. But she's happy and <laughs> wouldn't know any different. She's easygoing. I mean, the dogs will kind of wrestle around her. She doesn't try to fight anybody. Like, she's just, she's so mellow and just so loving. And, and other than that, she's in pretty good shape. She just recently had a dental, so clean breath for kissing. And yeah, she's really, she's awesome. She's awesome. This is Ertz. Ertz is eight years old. Ertz was found, um, clipped to a fence at a veterinary clinic. Um, we're not sure how long he'd been there. Poor guy was like scared and everything. He's with us now obviously and he's doing really well. We did notice when he first got to us there was a little bit of fence aggression um, but as, as we've watched him it, it seems more that his he's just so excited about people and being around the action that that's what makes him kind of crazy because he doesn't know how to shake off all that energy. So although he's eight on paper he's more like three in person because <laughs> he's got tons of personality very social, very curious, very smart, he's funny, really, really active. Definitely needs a secure home, secure yard, because he would give Houdini a run for his money. He's an escape artist extraordinaire. So um, <laughs> definitely need to keep an eye out for him. Um, Ertz does have um, immature cataracts, so it's the beginning stages of cataracts, but as of right now, his sight is good, no medications needed. As he ages, it'll probably become an issue where um, there's a chance he could lose some of his sight, but right now, not a problem at all. 
Um, I think the things we love most about Ertz um, is his little tongue sticks out every once in a while. And when you talk to him, he's got the classic pug head tilt. Um, but he's, he's awesome. He's awesome. He just needs um, a family that's patient with him. You know, just because he might need a little bit of training. Um, and just to kind of understand his excitement ways. And sometimes he tries to, like, play bite your finger and things like that. So, um, But he'd be an awesome addition to any home. Sure. This is Candy. Um, she's about nine years old. She was an owner relinquishment. Um, they were thinking about euthanizing her, so a good thing that they found us. She's been with us for a little over a year. She has a special needs dog. We believe that's the reason why. She needs to be expressed every, we do it at the facility every four to five hours, um, but sometimes we don't get that much from her because a lot of the day she spends sleeping, so she's not taking in water or eating all day. She's very playful. She still likes to play. She still likes to go on walks, although they do need to be kept short because of her hind end weakness. She loves cuddles. She does well with other dogs. She's just all in all a great dog to have around. If you are interested in adopting one of the dogs, please contact Pug Nation Rescue of Los Angeles by visiting PugNationLA.org or call 310-327 7871. We are all thankful for our pups, so Thanksgiving is a great holiday to spend with our pups. But it is important to keep our furry friends safe. So Gene Brusovich from Tranquil Pet is here to share some Thanksgiving safety tips for dogs. So Gene, Thanksgiving is a very delicious holiday, but it could have some potential problems for your dog. Uh, what are some kind of Thanksgiving safety tips that pet parents should be aware of? Make sure that you keep them in their regular routine, feed them, you know, the same schedule, uh, exercise, play time, make sure they have plenty of water with all the people coming and going over the holidays. There's a little anxiety added to that sometimes with animals, so you want to make sure they have, they, and that, that will make them want to drink more, so make sure they have plenty of, you know, fresh, clean water. Also, if it gets a little hectic around Thanksgiving Day with the, the animals, you might want to get them a thunder shirt. The compression on that seems to make them feel secure. You also might want to give them a place, another room away from the activities, shut them off in a room where they have, you know, water, treats, bed, quiet time, maybe the TV canine corners going or the radio going or something to keep them calm. You also don't want them around the table to be picking up the scraps. A lot of my uh, tips today is about the foods that are toxic to the animals. Turkey, one of the tips I have is turkey can be toxic to animals. The skin, the herbs, especially when you put it in the stuffing, the herbs are very toxic to the animals. Turkey bones, maybe something falls, those can break off, get lodged in their, in their throats or in their stomach and they can puncture their esophagus and you can have you know major problems like that. That kind of stuff can also create pancreatitis in them, which they'll have severe um, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, vomiting, diarrhea, depression. If you suspect any of these things, call your vet. Obviously, if it's Thanksgiving, you may end up wanting to call the Pet Poison Helpline or the ASPCA hotline mm -hmm. to talk to a toxicologist. So some other things, some other foods that are toxic to pets are onions and garlic. Especially that's why people sometimes put, put a lot of this stuff obviously along with the herbs in their stuffing and those are toxic to um, pets. Grapes and raisins are poisonous for them as well. Again we go back to chocolate, especially baking and dark chocolate are, are toxic. Other dangerous foods, corn on the cob, that cob can get, well corn is not necessarily toxic, the cob itself can get stuck in their intestines and that can cause you major problems. Mushrooms, again the sage and the herbs, the fat trimmings, bread dough. Now bread dough, raw bread dough if they grab something, the yeast inside their stomachs can make it swell up from the heat and then you're having in intestinal problems, stomach problems with the swelling. Um, alcohol and raw eggs. Wow. Are, are toxic to the animals. And a lot of those ingredients and those foods are, are commonly found on Thanksgiving yes. tables and in kitchens. And, and also at Christmas. Right. But yes, those are very, you need to be very, that's why I said give them that quiet time, that quiet room away from all the foods, activities when you have all those people over. Because somebody's eventually gonna oh, yeah. 
um, not intentionally, but something's going to end up on the floor. Yeah. Also, I would also be careful about the water bowl. Mm -hmm. Make sure if you know if it's in the kitchen, you move it to that quiet place because sometimes the people coming and going, they might not know it's there and kick it, and then right. they have no water to drink. Okay. Um, the food wrappings, the aluminum foil, the wax paper, anything that you're causing, those kind of things can cause intestinal obstructions. So make sure that you again throw them away where the animals can't get in it because they're going to be smelling that stuff and oh, they're yeah. going to be looking to get in those um, oh yeah you know in, in, into those places to get to it if you are interested in contacting Jean or Tranquil Pet Canine Aquatics and Holistic Healing Center please visit tranquilpet.com Canine Companions for Independence is a national organization that raises and trains service dogs for adults children and veterans with disabilities we were able to sit down with one of the volunteers and her service dog in training. For Melaine Yoakum, her involvement with Canine Companions for Independence started as just a way to give back, but it has become so much more. I got involved just because my daughters had gone off to college and I felt like it was a time in my life I could give back to something else. And I looked around and I found this particular charity and the more I knew, the more I liked, and I love dogs. Um, and surprisingly enough, we have a saying, you come for the dogs, but you stay for the people, because you meet some of the greatest people in this organization. Eight years and six puppies later, Melaine plans to continue her work with Canine Companions for Independence. I will keep doing this as long as I can, because I feel like I'm doing this for somebody I haven't met yet, but when you meet the people that get these dogs and you see how immediately their lives are changed for the better, it's like, how could I not? How could I not do this? The work that Melaine and other puppy raisers with Canine Companions for Independence do helps people around the country. Canine Companions for Independence is a nonprofit organization that's devoted to ad helping adults and children with disabilities live a more independent life through highly trained assistance dogs. Canine Companions for Independence is the oldest and largest nationwide service dog organization. They provide service dogs free of charge to individuals with disabilities. There are five different types that we train and raise. So first is a service dog, which as I said is paired with one individual who has a disability and the dog is used to mitigate some of those disabilities or to lessen their burden in daily life. We also train a skilled companion and in that case the team is actually three. It's the dog, it's a handler which sometimes is the parent or a caregiver and it's a child. So a skilled companion is with a child and they are a team as long as the three are together. So the parent or caregiver couldn't take the dog out in public but with the three of them they have public access. And a skilled companion is beautiful because it not only is helping that child with a disability overcome some of those disabilities, but it also acts as a social bridge. Many times, even disabled adults will say, I feel invisible. And children especially don't have a lot of friends if they're in a wheelchair or they're autistic. And the dog serves as a social bridge to help them make friends. And that's the sweetest part. We also train and place hearing dogs for deaf and hard of hearing people. And it helps alert them to sounds in their environment, uh, someone calling their name, uh, a smoke alarm, a fire engine, emergency equipment, uh, and it will take them to the sound. So it would alert them by touching its nose to their leg and the person would say, what? And the dog will take them to the sound. So if it was somebody calling their name, for example. Uh, the other type we place is a facility dog, and that is with an individual who generally is a professional working in, let's just say, a therapy department of a hospital, and they work with multiple clients, and they will use the dog to encourage children to develop their fine motor skills by maybe throwing a ball or picking something out of the dog's vest. Uh, so they use it in their work. So it, the dog actually helps hundreds of people, if not thousands of people in that environment. And then lastly, we place dogs with our veterans and first responders with PTSD. Uh, we've always placed dogs with veterans, 
but in this case we've seen a need for additional dogs for people who just have PTSD. And the dog acts as a barrier between someone approaching that individual so that the individual can feel much more comfortable going out in public. Uh, they can also wake them safely from night terrors by pulling off the covers and turning on the lights for them so that it's safe for them to wake up from those. So that's some of the, those are the five types that we provide. How do you differentiate that between those types of dogs? Is there different training that they do to be able to do yeah. like different tasks? How does that work? Yes, absolutely. So the timeline for training is the dogs are all bred in Northern California up near wine country in Santa Rosa. It's a beautiful campus. They have uh, all the veterinary staff is there. They breed their own dogs, mixes of Goldens and Labs, like this guy here, Tempo. Um, and then they come to, they're born and bred and stay in um, a person's home because we want them to be, from the time they're born, we want them to be with humans. Mm -hmm. And so for the first eight weeks, they're with their breeder caretaker home. Then they come to a volunteer puppy raiser like myself, a little eight week old ball of fur. <laughs> um, we train in 30 commands that the organization specifically has asked us to train in. And those are general, no matter what the dog is eventually going to be, we don't know. We don't know what Tempo's going to decide he wants to be or what his skills are right for. So we train these basic 30 commands. Then when I turn the dog in after 18 months or so, then they go into professional training. And that's when they will start having an idea of what the dog would be particularly suited for. Okay. And then they will start training the commands that would work for that particular type of dog. The puppy raisers have dogs from eight weeks until 18 months when they leave for professional training. And no matter how many times they have been through it, the goodbyes are never easy. It's the hardest part, but you know it's coming from the time they hand you the little fluff ball at eight weeks. So, and you answer that question so often when you're out in public, how can you give them up? So I answer that question probably 10 times a day. It doesn't make it easier. It doesn't make it easier that he's my sixth. Um, <laughs> but that is the hardest part. But knowing it's good, he's gonna help somebody is what's great. And for the volunteer puppy raisers, knowing the dog they trained and cared for is going to help someone is truly the best feeling. When you get that first time that your dog that you raised is going to graduate with their forever person. And uh, we get the opportunity to meet that person. My first dog went with a young lady who's in Salt Lake City. And she is a beautiful young lady now. And the first time I met her, uh, she was so anxious, she couldn't even stay in the room with us. Her mom and dad clearly were there, but yeah. she was so anxious about just being in a room with a few people. And right now, six years later, she's graduated high school. She is um, volunteering at an aquarium. Oh, she has blossomed, and they're part of our family. So yeah. you get this whole new family. And that's got to be the best part and the most rewarding part. After 18 months with the volunteer puppy raiser, Canine Companions for Independence trains the dogs for six months for specific purposes based on their strengths and then pairs them with someone they can help the most. The organization is so good yeah. about seeing what this dog would be good for and finding out what the person needs mm -hmm. that those paths meet at a, at a thing called team training which is two weeks before graduation. Uh -huh. uh, the person that they believe would be right for this particular dog, or usually there's 10 or 12 dogs graduating, they would invite them to team training. And at team training, they introduce the dog to the people that they believe they should be matched with. And they have a couple of alternatives, alternative dogs. Um, and usually the magic starts happening. And it's amazing how you'll hear from the graduates at graduation now, two weeks later, what you'll hear is, from the minute I saw that dog, I knew he was mine. Canine Companions for Independence holds quarterly graduations that are open to the public. What you do see is they videoed what's happened in those two weeks before this handing over of the leash. And then the puppy raiser gets to come back and meet halfway on stage with the new graduate. I know, there's just like, there's no, there's no way to describe what that feels like to then go hand the leash to that beautiful little girl on the other side who you know's life has already changed and is going to change even more.
If you would like more information about Canine Companions for Independence, please visit their website, cci.org. Melaney is back now to answer a few more questions about Canine Companions for Independence. What are the differences between service animals, emotional support animals, and therapy animals? So a service animal is generally paired with one individual who has a disability and the dog is there to mitigate some of the pieces of the disability. Um, so for example, if I were in a wheelchair, my service animal could pick something up that I dropped and return it to me. An emotional assistance dog does not have public access except for in uh, housing mm -hmm. and on airlines. Okay. So it is not covered by the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act. Mm -hmm. A service dog, all the regulations are through the Americans with Disabilities Act. Okay. Emotional support only has access in housing, so if I needed an emotional support dog and I were living in a condo complex that didn't allow dogs, mm -hmm. I would be able to have my dog there with me for emotional support. Okay. Um, then there's therapy dogs. Mm -hmm. Therapy dogs would be more like my highly trained pet that I use in one facility, so okay. potentially a hospital or a courtroom or something like that, and I use that dog, um, usually gratis without pay, to help many customers, so help children in hospitals or help staff in hospitals feel better. Um, but they also do not have public access, but they're allowed in that facility, that one facility that they generally are a therapy dog for. What tasks do the Canine Companions for Independence dogs do for their humans? They do a lot of things for their, um, their forever person. They help pick up things. That's the most common mm -hmm. that you'll hear. They can turn on and off lights, so they operate switches. Uh, clearly in public, they're using the handicap door sign to open the door uh, and to then be a social bridge in public uh, to help people with anxiety. Um, get through the grocery store. Uh, they also at home are really good at emptying the dryer into the laundry basket and tugging the laundry basket to the bedroom or wherever they need. Goodness. They can open doors and drawers, refrigerators, get a soda, get a water, and bring it to the person. They can do, as I, I said with our veterans, wake them from night terror safely. Uh, for children, they can be the best buddy and they can do some commands that would help them with, you know, friends and so they can shake, you know. Here's my dog, you want to shake? And oh yeah, and it starts a whole conversation and they find out that that child is just like any other child. They just happen to be in a wheelchair. Um, so things like that are the most common things that they do. Where do the canine companions for independence dogs retire? When the dog is deemed to be needing to retire from service and canine companions thank you buddy canine companions will help that team decide and as you can imagine it would oh, be a yeah. tough decision for that teammate mm -hmm. um, they will start a discussion about a successor dog okay uh, the person can get another dog and they have the right to keep the dog that oh. has worked for them as a pet oh. And 90% of the time they do, yeah. <laughs> as you might imagine, that dog has been just so important to them. So they can keep the dog and, like yeah. I said, normally they do and they live out their golden years mm -hmm. there. And what you hear from the graduates is that when they get their new dog, it's like the, the dog knows I can retire now. Yeah. And they say, oh, they're just chilling in retirement. Yeah, living the good living life. Living the good just life. Just hanging out. <laughs> How much do the Canine Companions for Independence dogs cost the recipients? Canine Companions, because we're a nonprofit and we get our funding from a lot of volunteers and supporters, uh, gives these dogs away for free. Uh, that's really almost unheard of. Uh, there's about $50,000 of effort and work that goes into the breeding, the veterinary care, the volunteer puppy raisers, of course, we put the bill while we have them, but uh, then the training and the ongoing support. So it doesn't end with graduation, like here's your dog, go home. Right. Uh, there's support for the life of the dog, the working life of the dog uh, through Canine Companions. So um, to have public access, one has to get recertified mm -hmm. every year, three years, whatever. So Canine Companions make sure that that team is still a working team and wow. able to have that public access. 
How can someone apply for a service dog through Canine Companions for Independence? It's pretty easy to start. You just go on our website, cci.org, and there's a place to apply for a dog, mm -hmm. simply enough. Uh, you would just go on there. There's a little video that talks about the process that you'll go through, and then there's a few questions you answer. Wow. And once you answer those, the staff will call you and start talking to you more about what you're thinking. Does Canine Companions for Independence have events? A few big events every year. One is called Dog Fest. That's a very family friendly and dog friendly event. Uh, we have it someplace in LA, Orange County. You can always check on the website. Uh, and it is really an awareness thing. So we want everybody to come out with their pet dogs. We want everybody to learn more about Canine Companions and the great work that we do. And it's just a fun day. We have booths, all dog related. We have shows. We have all kinds of things that day. And it's just a, a really fun day. We also have a hot dog or hot dog. Uh, it's high fashion for doggies. It's a runway fashion show. Uh, oh, we wow. have the Hollywood types being our judges. <laughs> And it's a really another it's another fundraiser, but obviously a really good awareness for the great work of Canine Companions. You'll see our graduates talking at those events, and you'll hear their stories, which are just heartwarming. Um, and then we have golf tournaments. We have a golf tournament coming up. It's usually every August uh, at La Costa, mm -hmm. Omni La Costa Resort, and that's also a fundraiser. There'll be puppies on every hole. Oh my goodness. Yes. Uh oh. Yeah, that gets oh, people oh, um, gets sold out quickly. Oh my goodness. That's but we amazing. Do, we do have a lot of fun at our golf tournaments. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all across the country, oh, so wow. anybody who lives anywhere can go to a golf tournament. That's wonderful. And then we have all kinds of other events that you can find out about, mostly graduations quarterly. Mm -hmm. uh, February, May, August, and November, okay. free, open to the public. So everybody come to those. They're also streamed online. Oh, so that's great. if you can't make it to Oceanside or one of the six centers, yeah. you can watch them online. Oh, that's really cool. Just have tissues handy. Yes, definitely. <laughs> if you would like more information about Canine Companions for Independence, please visit their website, cci.org. If you have a question, contact us and we'll be sure to get you the right answer. Call us at 310-618-5762 or email us at caninecorner at torrentca.gov. Now, if you missed the rescue pups at the beginning of our show, or if you're anything like me and want to see the adorable dogs again, here's your recap. Lexi is a 12-year-old pug. She's a super sweet dog. She loves spending time with humans and loves belly rubs. She's very easygoing. She would love to be your best friend. Ertz is an eight-year-old pug. He is very smart and very active. He has a lot of energy and would love to be your companion. Candy is a nine-year-old pug. She is very playful. She loves cuddling and she likes going on walks. She has a great personality and would love to be a part of your family. If you are interested in adopting one of the dogs, please contact Pug Nation Rescue of Los Angeles by visiting PugNationLA.org or call 310-327-7871. If you want even more Canine Corner or just want to say hello or share a photo of your dog who you're thankful for, we always love to hear from you. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. That's all the time we have today. Thanks for joining us here on Canine Corner. We wish you and your dog a very happy Thanksgiving. I'm Rhiannon Trutanich and we'll see you next time.